Shalom. I want to first begin by giving all praises, honor, and glory to my power, Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai, Bahashom, Racha, Kadash. Yahweh is the true holy name of the Heavenly Father, who this world ignorantly calls God, and Bahashom is in the name, and Yahweh Shai is the true name of our Lord and Savior, who this world equally called Jesus, and the Rechak Wadash is the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue, and I also want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which are the true leaders of the nation of Israel, that Yahweh Bashamah Shai has set up through the Spirit to lead and to guide and also to be great examples for the nation of Israel. And I also want to say Shalom to the 144,000 men that are laboring and toiling in his work for the sake of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh And I also want to say Shalom to the innumerable multitude which consists of the men, women, and children that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh will show mercy upon in these last days. And I'm the brother Gabar from the GMS West Palm Beach Camp. And I'm coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. And I pray that the elect of the nation of Israel is edified. Lord, I pray that at least one of your sheep is edified during this lesson. And Lord willing, this lesson is going to be entitled Stay on the Path. And as you've seen in that short video, all right, Denzel Washington, that was a movie, A Book of Eli, which is a very uh, famous movie that all the brothers are familiar with. And that scene was probably one of my favorite scenes throughout the whole movie. And I've been thinking about that scene, thinking about what Denzel Washington was said, stay on the path. Hey, because, you know, that's that's our mindset is to continue to walk, continue to endure, continue to take the proper the proper steps to get to the kingdom. All right, because we not fighting and laboring in this truth just so we can fall out. All right, we trying to cross the finish line. We trying to get beamed up on those chariots when the destruction come. So I just want to, you know, pretty much flow through the spirit. And I'm going to start at 2nd Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 2. And starting at verse... 42 and it reads I Ezra saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number and those great people that couldn't be numbered that's the elect all right beginning with the 144,000 and also the innumerable multitude which Yahweh Shemel Shai will show mercy upon the men, women, and children. And it continued to read, and it says, And they all praise the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest. And that man that was of high stature, taller than all the rest, that was Yahweh Shai, all right, who this world ignorantly called Jesus. And it says, and upon every one of their heads, he set crowns, right? And that's that crowning ceremony, you know? And that's why we got to continue to fight. That's why we got to continue to labor. Yahweh Shah said, occupy till I come. Give attendance to reading, exhortate, going out to the highways and byways, in season and out of season. We got to continue to make our bodies a living sacrifice. And it says, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. 
So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing. And that mortal clothing is speaking about the ways of this world. You got to put off the ways of this world. Smoking weed. Worshiping idols. Celebrating these pagan holidays. Romans 12 and 2 speaks about being transformed. Be, be renewed in your mind. Throw out all that garbage and filth which we learned in this world. And you got to you got to become a new babe spiritually. All right. Desire to send seal milk of the word. And that's how you grow. And it says and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh. Right. You got to put on immortality. And that begins with coming back to, to your power. Yahweh by Shem Shai. Drinking, drinking of the cup of Yahweh Shai. And it says, now are they crowned and received palms. You know, and this is why we are in this truth. Because we want to be crowned by Yahweh Shai. Hey, we got to go through tribulation real quick. Let me go to Acts real quick. This is Acts chapter 14 and verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. So we're going to go through a lot of tribulation, especially in these times that we're about to enter into. Our each and every last of our each and every last of our our faith is going to be tried. We all going to go through that hour of temptation. Some brothers might get casted in a prison. Some brothers might get shipped to a FEMA camp, concentration camp. We're going to be persecuted. Your family might turn their back on you. Children going to betray you. And these are things that we got to prepare our mind for. And I'm speaking first and foremost to myself. We got to be willing to even die for this truth. Lay our life down for this truth. So let me go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 2 and verse 46. Then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? And palms represents victory. We want the victory. And, and that comes, that comes with, with whatever that comes with. Whether we got to be beheaded for this truth. Whether we got to suffer persecution. You know, personally speaking, I really don't care. If I got to lay my life down for this truth, so be it. If I got to get casted into prison for this truth, so be it. I just want to be a part of that elect. I just hope and pray, Yahweh Shmuel Shai, keep the spirit on me all the way to the end. Verse 47, so he answered and said unto me, it is the son of Yahweh whom they have confessed in the world, right? And we're confessing the names of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. And those are the true names for salvation. And we believe that through faith. All right, Acts uh, 7, 
I believe that is. There is no other name given among men. Uh, Acts 4. All right, this is Acts chapter 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name given among, given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. I'll read that one more time. Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there a salvation in any other. All right. You, you got to call on the true names of the Father and the Son. And his name ain't Jesus. His name ain't God. His name ain't Allah. His name ain't Yahweh or Yahshua. You must call on the true name, Yahweh. Wa Yahweh Shai. For there is none other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Right? And the elect is going to be on one accord. The elect is going to be singing that one song. Going back to second Edges two and verse 48. Then the angel said unto me, go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy power thou hast seen. So that was it on that precept. And let's go to another one. You know, I just want to get some precepts. Bring, some, bring something out through the spirit. This is Sirach 4, verse 28. Strive for the truth unto death. And that's got to be our mindset. So what if we got to get put to death? Because death, we understand death now. Death is just a transition from this world to the spiritual world. Hey, and Yahweh Shai already said what happened to those who die in this truth. Let's get it real quick. All right, because hey, Esau Edom pushed that death, you know, like it's a bad thing or it's scary. Hey, well, we understand death. Let's get it real quick. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And this is speaking about, uh, let's read that again and break it down um, word, sentence, sentence for sentence. 1 Corinthians 15 and 52. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Right? Those who died serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh going to be raised up. And we shall all be changed. Right? Because we're not going to... This, this corruptible flesh is not going on the chariots. And Yahweh Shai, we're going to receive new bodies. It tells you that in Jeremiah, the 30th chapter. And also tells you that in the book of Hebrews, 8 and 8. We're going to receive new bodies. All right, we're going to have those incorruptible bodies. We're not going to sin. We're not going to go off. We're not going to get old. We're not going to have bodies and aches, aching pains. We're going to be able to fly. We're going to be able to go to different planets. Right? Verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. Right? So we living in these mortal bodies. These bodies die. They get tired. They get weak. They get old. You wake up with headaches. You wake up with knee pains and ache pains. The Lord is going to. He's going to uh, uh, hook us up. We're going to have new bodies in the kingdom of heaven. 
verse 54. So when this corruptible have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? We gonna have victory over death. The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to the Most High, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Amashiach. Right, we're going to have victory over death through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that's beautiful. Because that, that beating that Yahweh Shai took on that cross, that blood, We 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 are clean through the blood of Yahweh Shai, beginning with the elect, the hundred and forty four thousand, and the one third. In verse fifty eight, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Right, another word for steadfast is committed, unmovable. All right, we don't want to be double minded. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We got to go into the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, firm. We want to have our foundation built upon the rock, which is Yahweh Shai. When you think about a rock, a rock is, is, is durable. It can withstand wind. It can withstand rain. And we're gonna go through we're gonna go through tribulation. But as long as our foundation is built upon Yahweh Shai, we're gonna be able to endure it. Just like Yahweh Shai, he endured the cross. He endured his hour of temptation. And now it's our turn to, to endure our hour of temptation. But Yahweh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is gonna be there with us. All right, just like Yahweh was there with Yahweh Shai, guiding him, you know? And it says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And that's why our apostles and elders push uh, uh, doing daily lessons, because that's keeping us in the spirit. Because this truth is referred to as living waters. We don't, we don't, we don't want those, we want those waters to constantly be moving, like those rivers and streams. And that's why those rivers and streams are clean, because that water is constantly moving. And when you think about a pond or a lake, that water is sitting there stagnant. And what happens? Mold, algae, the water becomes unclean, unfruitful. And we don't want to be like that, right? Yahweh Shai said, occupy till I come. You know, if you love me, feed my sheep. It says, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This work that we doing is not in vain. Everything outside of this truth is really vanity. Our jobs, okay, which, which is important to work. The scripture says, you know, um, we're supposed to get our daily bread, okay? But nothing else comes before this truth not our job not our children not your woman not your house not your car all that shit is insignificant none of that shit can save you but this work that we doing lord willing we continue to do it lord willing we endure to the end and these works gonna be gonna be written about in the kingdom of heaven let's get another precept this is Hebrews chapter 6 and 10. For Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Right. The Lord is not unrighteous. We serve a righteous power. Second Peter is the third chapter and the ninth verse. The Lord said he's not slack concerning his promise. The Lord doesn't break his promises.
It says, which ye have showed towards his name and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. All right, and we got to do this, this work in love. We got to do this work in truth and in sincerity. All right, and the minister goes to serve. We're servants. We serve one another. We serve Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Hey, the water Yahweh Bashim Al Shai for giving us this truth, for opening up our eyes. You know, because a lot of people in this world, they haven't been given that gift of faith. They haven't been given that those spiritual eyes to see and those spiritual ears to hear. You know? This is 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. All right, we got to continue to fight. Continue to stay on that straight and narrow path. All right, we ain't fighting no carnal fight. We battling spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, that's why we got to stay girded up in, in prayer, walking in the spirit, because as the days approach, a hey, Satan's going to come down more and more. It's going to come down harder and harder. And Satan going gonna to use, you know, your family, your friends, your loved ones, your wife or your ch or your children to try to deter you off off the path. Let's read this again. First Timothy six and twelve. Fight the good fight of faith. All right, and a good fight is you get knocked down, you get back up and fight. Ain't no never seen a good fight where somebody just get knocked out in twelve seconds. And then the fight was over. That's not considered a good fight. It says lay hold on eternal life. Why right, we got to lay hold on it. Keeping our eye on that prize. We don't want to die here. With, with these wicked ass niggas. Be judged with, with they ass man. We want to get beamed up on the chariots. We want to look down at our enemies being destroyed. It says, where unto thou art also called. Many are called, but only a few are chosen. It says it has professed a good profession before many witnesses. This is our true profession. This is our true occupation. Yeah, we work our bullshit nine to fives. But this is this is our true job right here. How about Shemal Shai has called us into this truth, into this marvelous light? We can't take this truth for granted. This is Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. And that word straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, -T, is talking about a level of difficulty. And this the scripture says in Syrac 2 and, 2 and 1, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare to go through shit. Prepare for your family to hate you. Prepare for your family to betray you. Hey, Yahweh Shai already warned us of these things. Though they shall be a, those shall be your enemy of those of your own household. You know, roughly paraphrasing. I, I come to send division. Prepare for betrayal. Prepare for your woman to walk out of your life. Prepare to be persecuted. You know, and I feel that through my spirit that, you know, persecution is coming. Esau, Edom gonna come down with great wrath 
don't be shocked when your family betray you. Don't be shocked when your family turn you in. Because their foundation is not built upon that rock. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Right? This world. This world, you continue to walk in this world, continue to follow after the ways of this world. That's going to destroy you. That's why Micah 2 and 10. Rise and depart. But this is not your rest. This is, this is not our comfort. We didn't get put here to be comfortable. We got put here to serve a, a, a sentence. It's time to get right with your power. It's time to get right with your maker. If you don't get right with your maker, you're going to be destroyed here by way of thermal nuclear missiles. Warren says that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in there at right and that's why Exodus says follow not a multitude to do evil two thirds of our people is going to get cut off and die 66.6 .6 of our people are wicked that's a that's more than half of our people Verse 14, you know, real quick, you know, and that's why we can't be followers. Can't follow after your, your homeboy. Can't follow after these so-called celebrities. The Lord is calling us to be leaders. All right. And we do follow. We follow men. But the men who Yahweh Bashim Shai has set up through the spirit. Beginning with our apostles and elders and bishops. Those are our righteous. Those are our righteous uh, spiritual fathers. All right, we don't follow after wicked men. We follow after the men who Yahweh Bashem al Shai has set up through the spirit. Okay, just like in the time of, of Moses. Moses was uh, set up to lead the nation of Israel and the Lord is setting up our apostles and elders and bishops and, and uh, elder brothers on down. You know, so we have we have righteous, righteous examples. Right. Matthew 7 and 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Right. So we got to continue to walk that straight and narrow. Like Denzel Washington said in, in, in that in that scene, stay on the path. That's not my concern. Stay on the path. That's not my concern. Okay, and we got we surrounded by all these fucking distractions. Okay, the television, the radio, the media, social media, you know, your family can be a distraction. Your woman can be a distraction. We gotta keep that eye on the prize. We got to have tunnel vision. Fuck what's going on to the to the left and right of us. Fuck what's going on behind us. You know, we we concerned about uh, straight ahead. And that's the kingdom of heaven. All right, it says, Which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. Only a few. Just like in the time of all the way, going back all the way to the times of, of Noah. Only eight souls got saved. Eight souls got delivered from death. And fast forward into these times that we in now, only a few souls going to be delivered. Only a few souls is going to be saved. This is 2nd Ezra 8 and verse 3. There be many created. Many people in this world right now. I believe there is over 8 billion people in the world. But it says, but few shall be saved. Right? Only the elect. That's who the Lord is dealing with. The Lord always kept his, his, circle, his circle small. His circle tight. Right? 
Let's get this real quick. Romans chapter 8. No, I mean, Romans 11. Romans chapter 11 and verse 7. What then Israel have not attained that which he seeketh for? But the election have attained it, and the rest were blinded. So the Lord is only dealing with the elect of the nation of Israel. The rest of the nation of Israel is blinded. That's why they still partying, drinking, turning up. Because they don't have those spiritual eyes to see. They don't have those spiritual ears to hear. And that's why Matthew 13 and 16 it says, Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Those are those spiritual eyes to see, those spiritual ears to hear. Okay, we see the times that we're living in. All hell is about to break loose in the streets of America. But you got these niggas and coons partying, drinking, turning up. Just like they was in the time of Noah. We, we in the times of Noah all over again. And these people gonna get overtooken. Verse 8. According as it is written, the Most High has given them the spirit of slumber. They sleeping right now, spiritually. And it's more than just knowing that you're a Hebrew Israelite. It's more than, oh, you got to wear your fringes, wear your dress at, sis. That shit, that shit, it go way deeper than that. But these same men who's, who's saying, keep the law, keep the law. You still calling on Jesus. You still shaving your beard. You still getting lineups. You still got long ass hair. Dreadlocks. It's about your spirit. That's, that's what the Lord is, is looking at. He's looking at the inner man. It says eyes that they should not see. All right, these people don't got eyes to see, those spiritual eyes to see. There's famine on the rise, persecution, wars and rumors of wars. There's up wars of the people across the world, pestilence. And it's only going to continue to get worse from here on out. This is just the beginning of sorrows. And it says ears that they should not hear unto this day. They don't have those spiritual ears to hear. Because you got the, the true men of the Lord, the true men of Yahweh Bashim al Shah, out on the highways and byways, week in and week out. You people walk past them, scoff, mock. How can you walk past the men of the Lord and not regard what they saying? You walking by and you got the men telling, telling you that this place is about to be destroyed. And you don't ask, you don't stop to ask, hey, what you mean? That's because the Lord has given them uh, the spirit of slumber. And truly, they, really, they haven't been given the gift of faith. Because this is what it all boils down to, faith. Verse 9, And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. So the Lord has set up stumbling blocks. Ultimately, why? Because the Lord don't want of all, all Israel to repent. So people are going to stumble over the name. People are going to stumble, stumble over over Israelite foreigners. Cause you got niggas saying, oh, this, this, you, you gotta be black or you gotta be brown skin. No, the Israelites gonna come in all different shapes, sizes, and forms. You don't have Israelites out there preaching, but they look like so-called white men. Look like so-called Chinese men. So-called East Indians. But that's a stumbling block. Got people stumbling over the over the 
Revelation 13 and 16, the MOTB, the radio frequency identification, that CHIP, which is the, the Karagma, they getting ready to go digital. They getting ready to put a micro CHIP into your fucking hand. You people don't see it though. And that's why this word is only for the elect. The elect is going to continue to stay on that path. That's not my concern, stay on that path. So that was it on this lesson. I pray that this lesson was edifying to at least one of your Hawa Bashim Shah sheep. And I'm going to close out with that. Lord willing, the elect of the nation of Israel was edified. And I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to my power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings unto the hopeful elect, the 144,000 men that are laboring and toiling in his work for the sake of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. And also want to say Shalawam to the innumerable multitude which consists of the men, women, and children that Yahweh Bashem Shai will show mercy upon in these last days. And the water Yahweh Bashem Shai for giving me the spirit of truth and also for giving me the Holy Spirit to make this lesson, Lord willing, until the next lesson, I'm going to say Shalawam and the Baba Ball. DTA, Kwam Yashala, Shalawam.